Hello, everyone. We hope you and your loved ones continue to be safe and fine as we navigate our lives through the new work environment. I am Anish Mashruwala, partner in the finance practice at JSA. In this episode of the JSA broadcast, my partners Raj Ramachandran from Corporate and Ananya Kumar from Disputes and I discuss an issue in relation to the moratorium on borrowings permitted by the Reserve Bank of India as part of the COVID relief package. As you may know, in order to cater to the acute liquidity stress due to the initial lockdown, the RBI first introduced the moratorium on March 27, 2020, permitting lenders, uh, a variety of categories, to grant a three-month waiver on payments from all its borrowers, which were falling between March 1st to May 31st, 2020. As the lockdown continued, the RBI extended this permission on May 23rd, 2020, for a further three months for payments which fell until August 31st, 2020. Now, given the current situation, there is already talk of a further extension, albeit on a more selected basis. But in this episode, we intend to cover a fundamental issue that has cropped up in relation to the moratorium in the first place. And that is one, whether interest on interest, you know, also known as capitalization of interest, can be charged by the lenders. So in that context, you know, I would like to ask Raj to share his thoughts on what the expectations of the borrowers are, especially corporate borrowers, uh, from the moratorium that has been provided by the RBI, and particularly with respect to the capitalization of interest. Thanks, Anish. The topic of moratorium is indeed very important and one that requires a lot of thought and foresight in implementation and decision making. It literally affects each and every person in the financial ecosystem, be it a borrower, a lender, a bank, the depositors and other stakeholders, either directly or indirectly. That said, from a borrower standpoint, the ideal position would have been that they are excused from making payment of principal and interest with no additional cost for the period comprising the moratorium and not just during the period of the moratorium. That, however, does not seem to be the intent for obvious reasons as the relaxation is merely a deferment and not a waiver with the interest continuing to accrue during the period of the deferment. Now, though the relaxation provided to the borrower from making payment during the period of the moratorium does not seem very generous on the face of it, on a closer look, it would still mean quite a leeway to address immediate financial stress of the borrower. The borrowers affected by the pandemic and having cash flow concerns or disruptions would have one less problem to deal with, that is identifying other sources of income to repay the lenders to avoid a default. The other key aspect and consequence of availing the benefit of the moratorium is that the unpaid interest would be considered as a loan due to capitalization of interest. It would be akin to the bank having lent monies to the borrower to pay the interest during the moratorium with the net effect being that post the moratorium, the borrower would not only have its initial loan, but will now also have an additional loan in his books to service. On the positive side, the relaxation from making payment during the period of the moratorium also ensures that the borrower's account will not be classified as an NPA due to non-payment with no adverse impact or effect on its credit score either. So all in all, some good benefits and as the borrowers would say, could be better. Borrowers should therefore only exercise the option to avail the benefit of the moratorium if it helps meet some other immediate business requirements or to conserve cash and not if they are able to meet their payment obligations and have liquidity. We are already seeing some restructuring of loans and revisions to the terms of repayment in interest, and it is likely that some more will follow, and hopefully that should result in some financial relief to the borrowers in addition to the time relief provided by the moratorium. 
Thanks, Raj. Um, you know, well, admittedly, the focus of the relief package uh, has been to provide support to the borrowers uh, in order to avoid defaults. Lenders would also want to ensure that their books are not adversely impacted, right? Accordingly, if they were to lose interest income for the entire duration of the moratorium, not only would their profitability be further impacted, but they would also have the adverse impact of the cost of maintaining regulatory capital for the duration of the moratorium. Where the impact of COVID is greater on certain business sectors, this would only mean additional risk taken on by those lenders for those borrowers. Accordingly, there has to be a commercial reasoning when applying the moratorium, even from a lender's perspective. In fact, if one looks at the RBI circulars in relation to the working capital borrowings, it in fact states very clearly that the accrued interest portion during the moratorium can be converted into a funded interest term loan, effectively suggesting that lenders may charge interest on the interest portion that has been converted into the fixed portion. So from a lender's perspective, the relief is one of giving its borrowers a breather during this unexpected cash crunch, but not one of taking the entire risk of lost income on itself. The lender's argument from a business perspective would sort of mirror its borrowers in that the lender also needs to be shielded from the impact of COVID in the same way that the borrower is being provided relief. Ultimately, therefore, it boils down to risk transfer of the impact of COVID. And while lenders do serve as financial partners of its borrowers, they cannot be equated as business partners. On the other hand, lenders, of course, need to be mindful that squeezing an already stressed borrower would not only be in their own interests in the long term, where there is an obvious going concern reason, uh, they would also want to make sure that it survives. Accordingly, lenders need to apply their commercial wisdom in balancing interests and, you know, pardon the pun here, uh, but obviously also protecting their own. In any case, uh, since the matter has merit on both sides, depending on which side you are on, it hasn't taken long for the Supreme Court to be called upon to weigh in, right, as all matters here. In that context, you know, I would like to ask you, Ananya, to provide some insights in relation to what the legal interpretation challenges are and how and, you know, whether the court should even be considering this aspect. Thanks, uh, Anisha and Raj. I think the both of you have wonderfully explained the different perspectives that arise on account of the moratorium, the lender's side and the borrower's side, so to say. Anish, uh, as you rightly mentioned, the question of the validity of the RBI circular is presently pending before the Supreme Court. And the primary point of contention in those proceedings is the interpretation of the language of the circular when it says that interest shall continue to accrue on the outstanding portion of the term loans during the moratorium period. So let's look at why the challenge. If you ask me, basically, it can be broken down into two parts. The first, that there is no complete payment holiday in terms of the RBI circular. In other words, while there is a deferment of the installment due date, Availing this deferment means that the borrower is liable to pay interest arising from the additional time being granted for repayment. So effectively, at the end of the day, you will end up paying more. You will end up paying for the time that you have taken. The second component, which is what seems to have prompted the Supreme Court to observe during the last set of hearings, uh, that the charging of interest during the period of moratorium would amount to interest on interest is whether further interest can be charged on the delay in payment of the original interest. So what does this mean? It's a complicated sentence. Under normal circumstances, the borrower would have paid the loan installment on the due date, and this installment would have included both a principal component as well as an interest component. The interpretation that has been placed on the RBI circular is that by availing the moratorium, not only would the borrower be liable to pay interest on the outstanding principal amount, but would also be liable to pay the carrying cost of the delay in repayment of the interest component, hence interest on interest. Now, if we look at the law on the subject of compound interest, capitalization of interest, and the concept of interest on interest, 
the supreme court had held in 2010 in the case of state of haryana versus sl arora that these concepts are not per se contrary to indian public policy even earlier in a 2002 constitution bench decision in central bank versus ravindra it had been held that there was nothing wrong in the parties voluntarily entering into transactions that have a stipulation for payment of compound interest at reasonable rates similarly there was nothing wrong in authorizing the creditor to capitalize interest on the remaining unpaid amounts so as to enable interest being charged at the agreed rate on the interest component of the capitalized sum for the succeeding period in principle therefore seeking payment of interest on interest is not per se impermissible having said so i think it can be argued firstly from a legal perspective that in the present case there is no contractual agreement already in place where the borrower has agreed to pay interest on interest and secondly from a practical perspective and this is to reiterate what you mentioned anish that by charging on interest uh, charging interest on interest the whole purpose of the moratorium in the covid-19 scenario is possibly being set at naught now uh, we are all aware that the matters listed uh, in the first week of august so in the coming few days so while it's difficult to predict what the final outcome would be and i say this because the lender's perspective of not wanting to be saddled with the risks and costs on account of covid is not without its own merit the ideal situation would be for the rbi as the regulator to come up with a midway solution possibly by permitting charging interest on interest but capping the rate at which such interest can be charged i think we need to remember that it's not always the legal interpretation that is the most important thing in the present context rather we need to look at what win win solutions can be found for all of us thanks ananya that is indeed a very helpful analysis on the issue its interpretation and you know what might be in store on this point i mean clearly the supreme court the rbi and of course the government will all have to play their part to ensure that the right balance is struck i mean there are already options uh, you know that are being heard in the corridors out there so let's hope for the best uh, in fact this also applies you know to the overall covid situation that we are facing we are now well into the fifth month of our new working life and with each passing day we hope that we are closer to a more definitive solution to the whole covid issue however at the same time we must keep in mind that we need to be prudent and precautious so that the last several months of restricted living is not compromised by letting our guard down on that note uh, you know we thank you all uh, for listening and you know we wish you a safe time ahead take care